It's gonna be one of those videos. What's up guys? I'm Nick, and this is Build Dad Build. A place where I promise to never refer to myself as ya boy. On this episode, we're gonna focus on the basic tools you need to get your shop up and running. I will focus on basic tools for the shop, and then I'm gonna go over a couple of basics if you wanna get into wood burning or wood carving. Let's do this. I'm gonna leave links to all the tools I go over down below. Unless I specifically think that this brand of such and such is better than other ones, that's just kind of a guideline. You'll notice I have a lot of Porter Cable tools. That's only because after Harvey, I ended up buying uh, a, a multitude of tools all at the same time, and I thought it would be better to have tools that share the same battery, which is great, but just know this, battery technology changes very quickly, so it's not like if I buy new Porter Cable tools that I can really still use the batteries that I have. Maybe, maybe not, they might have upgraded the battery, it might be some whole new joint, so it's not super necessary to to stick to one brand. I know some people think that you have to be brand loyal, and if you've got a brand that you like, do whatever. I usually go for what's on sale, and we'll say this. If you're buying multiple power tools at the same time, a lot of times you can find a deal on like a package set type thing. So keep an eye out for those. Also keep an eye out for uh, sales at like Lowe's and Home Depot. Two of the resources that you want to look into for tools. One, check your local classifieds, Craigslist, OfferUp, stuff like that. I usually say used tools are like used exercise equipment. They've either been beat to hell or they haven't been hardly touched at all. So look for the ones that haven't been hardly touched at all. And sometimes you can get a pretty good deal on something that hasn't been used a whole lot. The second thing to look into is the browser extension Honey. And this is not a paid advertisement by any means. I just use it and I think it's cool. Honey has a feature where you can go on Amazon and if you look up a particular tool or actually anything on Amazon. It will tell you if that's the best deal. You can also look and see how many times the price has changed on that. You can set alerts to tell you when the price drops below a certain amount. And that's how I buy almost all of my clamps because clamps will vary in price. They go up and down all the time. So I'll look up, you know, Bessie F style clamps. I will put an alert on there to let me know when it drops below X amount of dollars, I'll get the alert, and then I know that I can go in and I'm getting a pretty good deal. Check it out. If you use Honey or you have any questions about Honey, uh, leave it in the comments down below. All right, let's get to the tools. Let's get to the cool stuff, man. Okay, I have a lot of saws. I work with wood. I have to cut wood. A lot of saws. But the absolute first saw you should start out with is circular saw. Preferably cordless. It just makes your life a little bit easier, and they're super lightweight but you can make all the cuts that I make with all of these saws with the circular saw. For those of you that aren't familiar with the circular saw, you've got an adjustment here. You can change the angle of the blade so you can make angled cuts and you can change the depth. So in the past, everybody thinks of this as kind of a barbaric saw, right? It's really hard to get clean lines with. I would urge you to watch what Ben Ueda can do with a circular saw because I don't think that guy uses anything but a circular saw most of the time and he built all sorts of fantastic stuff. And to make sure that you're making accurate cuts with your, your circular saw, I always advise to pair it with a speed square. I picked up this, this is a 12 inch speed square. You can buy smaller ones, but I think this one's a little bit more versatile. You can cut a uh, larger stock with it. It's just, it's pretty solid. You can clamp it to a surface and use it as a guide. <laughs> yeah, good times right there. Next up is a drill. This is what you're gonna drive all your screws with. This is what you're gonna drill holes with. This is uh, probably one of the most essential things in the shop. This is gonna be one of the most versatile tools that you use in the shop. Definitely need a drill. Next up, jigsaw. This is basically the poor man's bandsaw. Anything that does not involve a straight cut, you can usually do with a jigsaw. And the only suggestion I would have with a jigsaw is to make sure that you get uh, some fine tooth woodworking blades. Usually the ones they come with are the coarse cut and they'll just tear the crap out of some wood. Jigsaw for all your non-straight cutting needs. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Hold on, hold on. D Daddy needs coffee. I promise I wouldn't call myself Daddy in videos anymore, I'm sorry. Okay, next up, clamps. Clamps are gonna be project specific, so I don't really have a particular clamp that I would suggest you go buy first. 
I would evaluate what projects you're gonna make and buy accordingly. Uh, you can't go wrong with some little F-style clamps, but depending on the size of the project, you may want you know, some bar clamps or something like that. Mm. Mm. I did forget one very important tool. One of the most important tools to have in your shop is a workbench or a work surface of some kind. So I picked this one up at Home Depot. I think it was a ding and dent sale. Uh, I built this, this workbench. It was about $70. I'll link that build right here. And holy shit, guys, I'm sorry. I totally overlooked a very, very important tool. And that is an orbital sander. When you first start woodworking, you're going to do a lot of sanding. And an orbital sander is just gonna help you out a ton to get everything nice and smooth. As far as sanding goes, I get a lot of questions about sanding. How long should you sand? And that kind of depends on on what you're sanding, how big the piece is, how well you put it together. Definitely check out a video by Jonathan Katz Moses. Uh, I believe it's called My Favorite Sanding Technique, where he goes over how to sand pretty in depth. I will uh, I'll put the link to that video down below. But definitely one of your first tool purchases should be an orbital sand. I guess I would say one extra tool, kind of a bonus tool, not something that you really need to start out with, but it will definitely give your pieces uh, a little bit more of a finished look is a trim router. Putting a nice little chamfer or a rounded edge on anything just makes it look a little bit more professional. So just, uh, just a thought, not something you have to pick up immediately. If you're building boxes, build a couple of boxes before you decide to invest in something like this to make your boxes look better. Okay guys, so I just looked everything up on Amazon and totaled it all up. I went ahead and did $70 for the workbench because that's what this one cost for me to build. And I figured about $25 for clamps. That would vary on what and how many clamps you buy. But the total for all of that stuff comes up to $470, which is right under 500 bucks. So you can, so you can outfit a shop to actually build things for under $500. Cool? Nick, that's really cool. All right guys, so next stop on stuff you need. Track me, track me, track me. Ooh. All right guys, next let's talk about the BBN in the shop. The boring but necessary. In any shop you should always have some sort of eye protection. Now if you wear glasses, you're one step ahead of everybody else. Just make sure they're shatterproof. But if you're like all the rest of us, you gotta get yourself a pair of birth control glasses. Oh yeah. I don't think I need a whole lot of explanation here. Just protect your eyes. They're very important to you. Next up, if you're doing anything that produces fumes, if you're doing any sanding, if you're doing anything that uh, causes sawdust at all, it's absolutely necessary to have some sort of respirator. I use this one by RZ Mask. It's super comfortable. It's really easy to change out the filters. They go on easy and they're comfortable and sexy. Not a sponsor. Although RZ mask, you could be. Also, not always necessary, but if you're doing any power carving or you're doing anything with fire at all, you should really invest in a good pair of gloves. If you're working with fire at all, I wouldn't get any sort of glove that has any sort of nylon or anything in it because that can melt and it can melt just directly to your skin. Uh, try to stick with anything that's made out of leather or something that's flame retardant. And the last piece of PPE that you need to be uh, concerned about is some sort of hearing protection, especially if you're working with uh, high-pitched power tools and things like that. I'm really bad about this. I wear earbuds. I should really wear something more like isotunes, but isotunes are expensive. So that is PPE, kids. So now let's talk about specialized tools. A lot of you guys know that I like to burn things. <laughs> so let's talk about torch and wood. When I started out in wood burning, I had two things at my disposal. I had this torch with just the nozzle that came with it, and I had this soldering kit. Prior to this, I did buy a cheap wood burning pen, but it was horrible. Uh, you couldn't control the heat. This was like 15, 16 bucks. And uh, it's got everything I need, uh, plus a bunch of stuff that I don't need unless I decide to do some soldering. But it comes with interchangeable heads, and it is perfect for getting in and doing detailed work or doing smaller burns like, uh, like the dragon over there, like the House Targaryen dragon over there. And I eventually graduated to the big boy. This one hooks up to a uh, can of propane. And that's definitely when you want to cover more surface area. 
But that's pretty much it to get you started in wood burning. And another specialty you might be interested in is power carve. I would definitely suggest that you start carving small things first and then graduate to larger things. You get an idea of kind of how the wood works underneath your hand, uh, what's going to pull you where, um, how to work with and against the grain and things like that. So once you're using like an angle grinder or something like that, you're not putting yourself in a position where you're gonna really injure yourself. What I use for all my small carving and medium carving for that matter is a Dremel tool. This is an archaic Dremel tool that you can't buy anymore. <laughs> I would definitely suggest getting the 3000. It's a really, really fine piece of equipment. I don't know anything about any other brand of rotary tool. So the only brand I would suggest to you is Dremel because that's all I've ever worked with. Not to say anything bad about the other ones, I just don't know anything about them. So this particular Dremel is hooked up to a flex shaft right now. Basically what that does is that allows me to take this, take this down to something smaller that I can hold my hand. But this is definitely really helpful when you're carving something. Like I use this to carve uh, the stars on this flag and things like that. It's something that you can hold in your hand, be fairly steady and use it like a pen as, as opposed to holding like a whole Dremel in your hand up here and trying to do detailed work. The other thing I use to help with detail work is a plunge base, kind of like you'd find on a router. Uh, basically the Dremel just mounts directly in here and then I can use this like a very small router. Now if you do want to get into larger power carving, then I definitely suggest going out and picking up an angle grinder. They're pretty cheap, man. They're like 30, 40 bucks. I pick up an angle grinder and when you start, I would just start with flap discs. These are basically just sanding discs. They look like that. This one is 80 grit. It's a really, really, really fast sander basically. It will remove a decent amount of material and it is less dangerous than something like the Arbor Tech Turbo Plane, which has blades on it. This is a great tool. I would say this is not a beginner tool by any means. This gone awry can be very dangerous. Not to say a flap disc couldn't hurt you, but the Turbo Plane would definitely do a little bit more damage. And that's it guys, it's really all you need to get started. It's really not as intimidating as it seems when you watch some of these other YouTube channels where the guys, which they have nice shops, man, and they worked for that stuff. So, I mean, I don't wanna, I don't wanna dog on it for that. I mean, it's great. It's just, uh, you know, you don't need uh, like a drum sander to get started. You don't even need a planer to get started. I mean, it's just more elbow grease. So if you guys have any questions about any of the tools uh, that I went over, you can go ahead and ask them in the comments below. If you have any suggestions, uh, things that you think I missed, you can put those down there as well. And guys, if you like this video, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. And if you think anybody else would benefit from this video, share it with a friend. Fellas, it's always a good idea to share this with, uh, with, with your lady friend and, and let her get some ideas for what to buy for Christmas. And ladies, it's always a good idea to share this with your gentlemen friends and let them know what they should get you for Christmas. And until next time, clinkies. And I still need an outro. Let's get to work. So first, let's take a look at my drawers.